Well, good morning, Journey family. Pastor Stephen here, and I'm so excited today to be with you and to be uh, having service together. And today we've got great worship from Eugene. I get to sing with him, and I'm excited about that. And then we also uh, have the opportunity to hear announcements from Jill. And then we are finishing Romans today. So uh, I'm so excited. It's a whole year that we've been in the book of Romans, and we are finishing this sermon series today. A couple things to keep in mind. Uh, you know, watch this sermon from or the service from a safe place. Limit your screens. Have a Bible with you uh, and, uh, and get ready to worship. Get ready to sing. I'm just so excited uh, to be with you all today. And, uh, and I just want to say that the Lord is with you and the Lord is for you and he loves you. So wherever you're at this morning, wherever you need, God wants to provide exactly what you need this morning spiritually. So get ready to receive. Hold your hands out. Get ready to receive from the Lord this morning. Let's pray, and we're going to dive right into worship. Jesus, we are ready to receive from you. We're ready to receive all that you have for us today as we sing and we celebrate together, as we hear the word together. Lead us. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, let's sing together. Well, hey guys, it's Eugene and Pastor Moki here on uh, this Sunday, ready to worship God uh, with you guys. I don't know if you're at home or if you're with a friend, if you're at a friend's house, but if you could just take some time to put away your electronics and screens and let's just worship God together. So we're going to start off with uh, God of the Promise. Let's go. Let's do it. I'm not gonna wait. I'm not gonna wait. Wait for these walls to fall. Cause I know a name that will bring them down. And I've got a praise waking within my soul. And I'm not ashamed to declare it now. Light of the world. Light of the world. Trample the darkness. Nothing can stop it. You are the God of the promise. Every word will be accomplished. Nothing can stop it. You are the God of the promise. Prepare the way. And prepare the way. The King of glory comes. And before His name. Every fear must bow And throw off your chains Jesus destroyed them all And up from the grave He is with us now Light of the world Light of the world Trample the darkness Nothing can stop it You are the God of the promise Every word will be accomplished. Nothing can stop it. You are the God of the promise. Oh. We're going to sing the gates of hell. The gates of hell will never stand a chance. Your name Prevails, Jesus, the great I am. No word will fail, no weapon formed against your name. Prevails, Jesus, the great I am. The gates of hell will never stand a chance. Your name prevails, Jesus, the great I am. No word will fail. No weapon formed against your name prevails. Jesus, the great I am. Oh. Light of the world. Light of the world. Trample the darkness. Nothing can stop me. You are the God of the promise. Every word will be accomplished. 
Nothing can stop me. You are the God of the promise. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be than hearing your love, hearing your love. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be than hearing your love, hearing your love. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more. I want more, I want more, I want more, won't you pour it out? I want more, 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 won't you pour it out? Set a fire down in my soul. That I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more, 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 I want more. I want more, won't you pour it out? I want more, 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 won't you pour it out? Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Let's sing There's No Place I'd Rather Be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be than hearing your love, hearing your love. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be than hearing your love, hearing your love. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God.
we belong to you, Father. Your love has come. We're orphans no longer bought and tuned. Your light and freedom by the blood. And the mercy of Jesus is rising, it's rising. The song of hope for us set free is rising, it's rising, it's rising up. Hallelujah to you, God of the redeemed. Hallelujah, you've opened blinded eyes to see. We will praise you. You are the everlasting life. Hallelujah. To you, God of the redeemed. Oh, God of the redeemed. We belong. We belong to you, Father. We're living for your glory and honor here on earth. Just as in heaven we usher in the reign of your kingdom. It's rising, it's rising, it's rising. The song of hope for us set free. It's rising, it's rising, it's rising. It's rising. It's rising. One more time. It's rising, it's rising, the song of hope for us set free. It's rising, it's rising, it's rising up. Hallelujah to you, God of the redeemed. Hallelujah, you've opened blinded eyes to see. We will praise you, you are the everlasting light. Hallelujah to you, God of the redeemed. Hallelujah to you, God of the redeemed. Hallelujah, you've opened blinded eyes to see. We will praise you. You are the everlasting light. Hallelujah to you, God of the redeemed. Darkness tries to roll over my bones. When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own. When brokenness and pain is all I know. I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. My fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Shame no longer. Shame no longer has a place to hide. And I am not a captive to the light. I'm not afraid. Come on. I'm not afraid to leave my past behind. No, I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. There's power. There's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty 
God a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. Power in your name. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. I think we need to go back and sing the bridge again. The bridge one more time. Yeah, let's sing that bridge again. We should sing it just a couple more times. I was thinking about that. Yeah. Like three times or? Yeah, let's do it. Let's just do it. Okay. Let's sing the bridge a little bit more. There's power that can break off every chain. Come on. There's power that can empty out of grace. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. Power in your name. There's power that can break off every chain. Come on. There's power that can empty our grave. Yes, God. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. Power in your name. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Anything else? You think about this? Yeah. Well, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your presence here. Um, always so faithful. So what a treat it is to be led in worship by Eugene. Uh, Eugene, we love you, and I'm just so excited to be discipling Eugene and grateful for his leadership here at The Journey as one of our worship leaders, and the future's bright. I, I, I really think that, um, that the Lord has something for Eugene in, in the coming year that he can't even imagine the goodness that, that God has. It's just a word that I got for you, Eugene. Well, church, we want to take the opportunity to receive our offering, and I want to thank you all for your generous giving in this time where I know finances are, are hard, and uh, some of you have been furloughed, some of you lost your jobs, and just want to thank you for continuing to give generously as we are continuing to serve our community. We actually did a bonus laundry love. We got called by another church in our area and needed some help, and because of your giving to the Journey General Fund and also to Laundry Love, we were able to go in and we were able to partner with them and do a, a, a different Laundry Love. We usually do it Wednesday nights, so we did another one on Thursday during the day for a homeless uh, community that is in our city. So uh, I'm just so grateful 
grateful for your generosity, grateful for your giving, and, and want to ask that you continue to be generous, continue to believe in abundance, continue to step in faith in your giving as we are moving in, uh, finishing our year strong, and moving into 2021. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's pray. Jesus, thank you for, uh, thank you for your church. Thank you for blessing us, God, with the ability, uh, with finances so that we could give and we could serve our community and love our families and. Uh, Lord, I pray for those who've lost their jobs, that they would get jobs. I pray that those who've been furloughed would uh, go off furlough. I pray that people would get raises. I pray that there would be blessing and increase, God, that could only be attributed to you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless us as we give in your name. Amen. Let's give. Hey everybody, I'm Jill Bailey and welcome to The Journey. We're going to get started with our sermon here in just a few minutes and we're so glad that you're here with us this morning. So please take a moment to get your Bible and journal ready. If you're new here with us at The Journey this morning, we want you to feel at home. So no matter what your background or current situation, just know that this is a safe and welcoming place and that we're so glad that you're here. We also want you to know that there's a place at The Journey that's just perfect for you because church is so much more than just a Sunday service. It would be so helpful to us if you would please be sure to make your way over to our Watch Life page at journeymedicine.com and fill out our visitor form today. When you hit submit, it goes to one of our pastors and you'll receive a nice welcome email from Pastor Stephen and a gift from us in the mail. We're so thankful that you're here with us today and we are excited to connect with you in our crazy new normal and have lots of ways to do it, including one that's just right for you. Connecting by text is easy peasy. Just send the words first time to 55498. We'll reach out to you via text to answer any questions you may have about the journey. You can also text all church to 55498, and then you'll be sent texts whenever service goes live, events happen in our church, or prayer is needed for the whole church or the whole city. We also have a Journey Church Madison Facebook page, a YouTube channel, and a neat little app you can download for free to keep it all organized. Just look for Journey Church Madison in your app store and download the home of all the cool widgets that help keep us connected through daily inspirational content in our virtual world. Hey there, church. We have some amazing news and answered prayer to share with you today. We still have three live, masked, distances, distanced, pre-registered services coming up for you to attend in person. One is even next Sunday, the 22nd of November, as well as December 6th and 20th at Gateway Community Church on the West Side. We have all been praying consistently and faithfully ever since COVID struck to find a way to meet in person again and safely in small numbers. And now... We have three services to choose from as well. We added one more service time to accommodate more of our Journey family to attend with masked safety smaller groups, social distancing spacing, and dedicated intervals of wiping down high traffic surfaces in between services to keep us all safe. So now we have still our 9 o'clock, which is no singing, perfect for immunocompromised. Then we have a 10 o'clock 
and an 1130 with singing. All the services have much rejoicing. So register as soon as possible and save the dates of November 22nd as well as December 6th and 20th, either the 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, or 1130. We'll see you there. As we are approaching Advent with anticipation and joy of Christmas, we want to add a note that we will be having Christmas Eve Eve services right here at Gateway Church as well. On Wednesday, 1223, for a special sacred space of worship and celebration. So please save the date. Service times are at 6 o'clock and 7.30 p.m. Every year we throw a Christmas party and give presents to the families and children that we bless during our Laundry Love community outreach. You can participate by giving to Laundry Love, buying a present from someone on the list, and by serving at Laundry Love on December 9th when we have our annual Christmas party. Just email info at journeymadison.com for more information. And church, this is still a great time for God's people to do ministry on a Sunday from their homes. That is why we have Journey at Home as an option for those of you who are comfortable meeting in person with your bubble, your quarantine pod. If you are interested in attending a Journey at Home site or opening up your home to host people to watch any of our services and comforting content together, just email info at journeymadison.com. Thanks so much for being here with us today. We believe you're here for a reason. God has something he wants to say specifically to you, wherever you are. And our hope is today that you feel closer to him and encouraged more than ever before. Please let us know if we can help you in any way. And connect with us at journeymadison.com and on social media to stay up to date with everything happening here at The Journey. We also hope to see each of you in our lobby time after the service on Zoom. So watch for the link in the chat on your streaming platform, and we'll see you there. We hope you have a great weekend. In the book of Romans, God, like a master architect, lays out his incredible plan of salvation. Using the apostle Paul, God sketches out the blueprint of the good news of Jesus Christ for all mankind. The same news that turned Paul from a murderous persecutor of Christians into a fervent follower of Christ himself. With great passion, Paul uses the themes righteousness, condemnation, justification, salvation, sanctification, glorification, sovereignty, and transformation among others to unpack the details of a simple yet incredible gift, the good news of Jesus Christ. The gospel message found in this letter has changed millions of lives since it was written thousands of years ago, and its timeless truth has made enemies of God into friends of God, and dead people into resurrected people. It will no doubt point you as well to the source of salvation. Jesus, Savior and Lord, the cornerstone of God's perfect blueprint. Well, hey, Journey family, we are here. We are in our final sermon through the book of Romans. That's right, we started in January of 2020. It's now mid-November, and we are finishing the book of Romans today. I am so excited to wrap this sermon up. Uh, we'll wrap the whole sermon series up, not because I want to be done with Romans, but because I'm just so excited that we've done it together. Not only have we been going through a global pandemic, sheltering in place, doing all these crazy things, but we're in God's Word, and we are growing together. So thank you. Thank you for being with us over this past year. Uh, and if you're just joining us for, uh, for the first time this Sunday, well, you're in for a treat because we're just talking about praising God today. And then you know uh, you're going to have a whole year of sermons that you can go through and grow in your knowledge of God and your love for Jesus uh, from this sermon series. So uh, this sermon is called Doxology. Doxology is a closing prayer, closing prayer. Praise to God. Uh, we're going to be Romans 16, verses 17 through 27. Romans 16, verses 17 through 27. Now, Paul spends all this time and all of this theology, and then he just closes with praise to God, with a doxology. Just praise God, praise God, praise God. And what I talked about last week at the beginning of Romans chapter 16 is this, is that uh, Paul ends really ends the book 
at the end of chapter 15, ends the kind of theological portion. And then here in, in chapter 16 is just all of his personal remarks, his personal remarks. And I talked last week about how ministry is personal, ministry is practical, ministry is in community. And so today we want to talk about praising God. There's some really practical things, and we're going we're gonna to talk about we're going to talk about Jesus, we're going to the Holy Spirit, we're going to talk about God the Father. It's going to just be a great time in God's Word together. One of my mentors, I talked about mentors last Sunday in the sermon, is a man named Steve Perdue. And Pastor Steve has been a four-square pastor for, I think, 50 years. He's been married for 50 years. He's, he's an incredible man of God. And I got to know him when I was on staff at the church in Olympia, the Church of Living Water. And when Pastor Steve first got hired, he got hired as this kind of mentor for the staff. And, uh, and I remember when I first was around him, he, just, he would say, praise the Lord all the time. Something bad would happen. Oh, man, uh, we're, we're under budget for this thing. Steve would say, praise the Lord. Somebody would come in and be like, man, I, uh, I'm really struggling with this, or I miscarried, or, or I lost my job, or this. And he had this default response of like, Phew. I mean, he would take the weight of what was ever happening. Praise the Lord. And if something good would happen, it would still, praise the Lord. I got the job. I got a raise. I, um, God healed me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, and initially, man, it bugged me. I was like, who praises the Lord this much? Who, who in the most difficult of situations, this must be something, it can't really be real. But the more I was around it, the more I saw that, that he had learned in all of his years of walking with Jesus, that the first thing to do is praise the Lord. If things are bad, praise the Lord because God's on the throne. If things are good, praise the Lord. He's with me. He gives me grace. If, if I'm sad, praise the Lord. He's, he's there to comfort me. And it, it instructed me, one, that I was not praising the Lord as much as I thought. <laughs> And two, that there was a depth of growth and character and grace that I, I've yet to achieve. And I'm so grateful for you, Pastor Steve, that your influence in my life, your continued mentorship in my life, and I praise the Lord for you. So we're talking about praising the Lord today. And Psalm 96 reminds us, ascribe to the Lord, O sons of the mighty, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. The Bible all over the place is saying, give glory to God. Give praise to God. Ascribe glory to God. Because if you don't ascribe glory to God, if you don't worship God, you're going to worship something else. This is a fundamental belief we have as, as Christians is that as at, the, at the end of the day, worship is what we're made for. And if we don't choose to worship Jesus, we are going to worship something else. That's, if we don't choose to worship Jesus, we're going to worship something else. But you can't change the default setting of worship in your heart. So let's dig into the text. Verse 17, Romans chapter 16. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. Meaning, anybody who's teaching things different from what I just taught you in the book of Romans, you need to avoid those people. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery they deceive the hearts of the naive. For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you. But I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent as to what is evil. Man, that is a, I want you to be wise and knowledgeable to what is good and innocent to what is evil. It's such a good word for us in this day and age. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you. So do Lucius and Jason and uh, Sosipater, my kinsmen, I, Tertius, who wrote this letter, greet you in the Lord. What does that mean? That means Paul wasn't even writing this letter. Paul was dictating it, and Tertius was writing it. So now Tertius puts his name in there. I, Tertius, who wrote this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, who is host to me, and the whole church greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother Quartus greet you. Again, ministry is personal. And then here the doxology. After all the theology, after all, all of what Paul has said in the book of Romans, this greatest letter ever written in the greatest book that ever written in the Bible, 
Verse 25, now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but now has been disclosed through the prophetic writings, has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory right now. We love you. To the only wise God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Amen. May we see your glory as we look at this text today. Show us your glory, God. In your name. Amen. Well, our first point for today is pursue unity in the Spirit. One of my favorite places to go. Psalm 133 says this, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. When we pursue unity, we get life forevermore. Where there is unity, the Lord commands blessing. Psalm 133. What is Paul saying here? I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you've been taught. Avoid them. Avoid people who are causing divisions and obstacles. People who just disrupt and create disunity. You want to avoid those people. Why? Because where there's unity, the Lord commands a blessing. Not just unity theologically. I get that. Christians, we've got to have unity theologically. We've got to have unity around Jesus, unity around the gospel. But there's unity you can have with the people in, your, in, in our city. There's unity you can have with the people in your neighborhood. As Christians, we're not people who look for ways to disunify. We're people who look for ways to unify. We're looking for ways that we can love and care and be a part of people's lives, not looking for ways to step out of that environment. Jesus even prays that we would be in the world, not of the world, And the primary place of unity Paul wanted to see is he wanted to see the, the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians in Rome have one body, one church, one community. And what was happening is the Gentile Christians, this is why Paul wrote the book of Romans, this is a recap, Paul wrote this book because the Gentile Christians were saying, let's just have our own Gentile Christian church and the Jews can have their own Jewish Christian church and we'll just have two different churches. We've seen that, right? Two different churches in one city, we don't want to be around one another, but we both love Jesus. Paul's like, no, you can have different churches to reach different people, but not if the motivation is, I don't want to be around those Gentile Christians, or I don't want to be around those Jewish Christians. He wants one body unified together. Not a Jewish Christian church and a Gentile Christian church, but one body unified together. And our framework for unity is the Spirit of God. Unity in the Spirit, for such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery deceive the hearts of the naive. For, verse 19, your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you. I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent. Quit trying to learn about what's evil. You don't need to learn about what's evil. You need to know more and more about Jesus, more and more about the gospel, more and more about unity and pursuing unity in the Spirit. Unity around head, heart, and hands. Unity around what we believe. Unity around who we are, children of God. Unity around doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with our God. Pursue unity in the Spirit. Pursue unity in the Spirit. Now, I love this next verse, verse 20. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Pursue victory in Jesus. When all is said and done, the end of the book of Romans, pursue unity in the Spirit. Pursue victory in Jesus. Why? Because, because the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. God always wins his battles. God is always victorious. The God of victory will crush Satan. And there's no condemnation in Jesus. There's nothing that separates us from God's love. We know this from Romans chapter 8. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Death, famine, um, demons. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Height, nor depth, nor anything. 
And as believers in Jesus, we fight from Jesus, not for it. So I say pursue victory in Jesus. And remember, you fight from victory, not for it. That's another thing I learned from, um, I remember Pastor John Kobler, who's side by side with me as, as a friend and an ally. And I remember Bert Smith saying over and over again, you don't fight for victory, you fight from victory. God has already won the battle. God is already ruling and reigning over all the universe. And so today, fight from victory, not for victory, because you've already got the victory in Jesus. Every promise from God is yes in Jesus. God always wins his battles. We are never on the defensive in our spiritual battle. Never on the defensive. There is no retreat. I showed you this last week, this coin that I got from my Uncle Chris. And I love my Uncle Chris Put on the whole armor of God is what the coin says. Pray always. And then it has Ephesians 6, 11 through 18. It reminds me, put on the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, the belt of truth, the shoes fit with the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit, the, blessed, the breastplate of righteousness. Come on. When you look at that armor, there's no armor for running back. You have no armor for your back because God, meant for us as his people to retreat from the battle because we win all the battles because Jesus has already given us the victory and he commands us what to put on the full armor of God to stand our ground how do we do that we understand what God teaches in here in the book of Romans and who we are our identity in Jesus that we are not orphans but we are royalty and God loves us and we put on this armor of God every day and we stand. I don't need to know all the lies of the enemy. I just need to know the truth of my Savior over and over and over again. And I encourage you, maybe you need to get off Facebook. Maybe you need to stop reading the news. Maybe you need to stop reading some of those other books. And you need to get into the word. You need to start reminding yourself of promises from Scripture. You don't need to know what is evil. You need to be innocent to what is evil. You don't need to need know more and more about the evil in the world. You need to know more and more about the goodness and the promises of God. What is your struggle right now? I bet for many of us, it's we know far too much about the evil in the world and not enough about the hope and the gospel of the kingdom. The promise from God is not pursue the evil in the world and understanding of it and all these things will be added to you. It's pursue God's kingdom and his righteousness and everything will be added to you. Pursue the kingdom of God. Pursue the righteousness of God. Church, put on the full armor every day that you can stand in the midst of all of the devil's evil schemes and trust that the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So pursue unity in the spirit. Pursue victory in Jesus. And if this sounds too triumphant, let me, let me just tell you, you need more triumphant in your life. We are in the midst of a pandemic. We are all being beat down in our mental health and our physical health. All of us around the world are struggling. When's it going to end? How is this going to move forward? We don't need more people telling us how hard it is. We actually need more. Look at how good God is. Look at how triumphant he is. Look at how he's going to overcome. I get enough of, look how hard it is. And when I come to God, what I get is I, he meets me in that challenge and then he takes me to the heights of his grace. And he shows me a future. And he says, we can get through this challenge now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Why? Because you are with me, God. Not because I understand the valley of the shadow of death. Not because the valley of the shadow of death, it's better with a flashlight. No, I'm through the valley of the shadow of death. Why? Because my Savior is with me. I don't need to understand more about the valley of the shadow of death. You're watching this thinking it's too triumphant. Not triumphant enough to overcome the lies of the enemy, the darkness around us. I think this word for us right now 
praise God. I would challenge you with Pastor Steve to just start saying when something happens, praise the Lord. Something bad happens. Praise the Lord. Something good happens. Praise the Lord. Something depressing, sad happens. Praise the Lord. To to center ourselves here in this text. Your obedience is known to all so that I rejoice over you. I want you to be wise to what is good and innocent to what is evil. I think it's a good challenge for us to begin to praise God more throughout our day. Not avoiding the truth of the reality. Pastor Steve would never avoid the truth and, and the hardness of a situation. But he would start that journey with praising God. Pursue the glory of the Father. Final point. Pursue the glory of the Father. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to the gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed to the prophetic writings, has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God. Be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory is what this world is about. The universe is about the glory of God. When the more God gives glory, the more we get joy. Everything goes back to the glory of God. Jesus does everything the Father asks him to do. Jesus is empowered by the Holy Spirit, and the Father gives Jesus the name that is above every name. At the end of the day, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord to the only Him who is able to strengthen you. Do you need strength? God is able to strengthen you according to the gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. Why do we need preaching? Because right here in this text, if you want to be strengthened by the gospel, you need people to preach the gospel to you according to the revelation of the mystery that is kept secret for long ages. It's now been disclosed to the prophetic writings. What are the prophetic writings? The word of God is the prophetic writings. Go into the glory of God. Pursue the glory of God the Father, this triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, with Paul. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Go into this. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. We are in the midst of a season in our country, in our city. That's so challenging with racial injustice. So challenging with people losing their jobs. So challenging with this presidential election. Some of you may be thinking, I really like the result of the presidential election. Some of you may be thinking, I I really disliked it. What Paul is saying is, both people start with praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you want to be strengthened according to the gospel? Listen to good preaching. Be in the word. The revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but it had been disclosed to the prophetic writings, has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God. To do what? To bring about obedience to his son, Jesus Christ. That the end of this is that we would be obedient to Jesus, we would praise God, and that people around us would begin to see our praise of God, to see our growth in the Spirit, to see our love for one another, to see our care for one another, and that more people come to know Jesus. Church, we, we love one another, we care for one another, we are a community of faith building one another up, and we want to see lost people come to know Jesus. Baptism's happening. How do we do that? Well, we're gathering in small and large groups. We're growing together in small and large groups, and then we're going into the city. We're going into the city. So many different ways that you are going into the city. I'm so grateful for you. As we wrap up the book of Romans, a whole year, in this incredible book, it's all about the righteousness of God, that God always does what is right, and God always keeps his promises. God always does what is right, and God always keeps his his promises. It's a privilege and an honor to have gone through a whole year of teaching through this book and growing with you as a church family. Great things are coming. How do I know that? Because God did incredible things this past year. 
And we may not know what's happening in the future. In fact, we don't know what will happen in the future. We don't know what 2021 will be like. But you know what we do know? We know the God who goes with us. Again, we don't know what's going to happen in 2021. But we know the God who goes with us. How do we know that God? Because we spent a year studying that God, studying Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, all here in the pages of Romans. You want to be prepared for 2021? Go back and listen to your favorite sermons from this series and be in the Word And you watch as the more you know God, the more you are knowledgeable and wise to what is good and innocent to what is evil, the more ready you are because then you know the God who goes with you. And let's do it together as a church family. As we move into 2021, celebrate. Celebrate with your group. Celebrate with with the whole church community. I can't wait to see many of you of our in-person services that are happening on November 22nd. We just had some on November 8th, and now we're going to have more on November 22nd at Gateway Community Church. That's where I'm filming from. And I'm so excited because I believe God is growing us. I believe God is taking us somewhere. I believe that God is taking the church community in Madison somewhere, and we get to be a part of it. We're not, we're not at the head of what God is doing. No, God is at the head of what he's doing, and he's inviting us along as he reaches our city. We are coming alongside what God is already at work doing. So, pursue unity in the Spirit. Pursue victory in Jesus. And pursue the glory of God the Father. And celebrate that we did the entire book of Romans. I love you, church. You are greater in the eyes of the Lord than you are in your own. And it's been an honor and a privilege to have preached through the whole book of Romans. I can't wait Uh, to hear over the next couple months and years to come all that God has done as we've studied this book together. Love you, church. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for a whole year through a a book. We thank you, God, that the the gospel is, is like the ocean and we can just be in the shallows or we can go deep. And we've done both here. We've gone shallow and learned elementary truths, but then we've gone real deep and had to put our put our diving suits on to learn about your sovereignty and your goodness and your grace and your your care for us and your righteousness and justification and sanctification. God, we pray as we move out from this book and into the Christmas, the holiday season, that you would continue to speak to us. God, that we would experience great blessing as a church and your favor in this community. God, may your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's read this one more time. Now to him who was able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but now has been disclosed through the prophetic writings, has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith, To the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen.